over 25 years ago, on September 29th, 1998, we watched a brainy girl with curly hair drop everything to follow a guy she only kind of knew all the way to college. And so began Felicity. My name is Juliette Littman, and I'm a Felicity super fan. Join me, Amanda Foreman, who you may know better as Megan, the roommate, and Greg Grunberg, who you may also know as Sean Blunberg, as the three of us revisit our favorite moments from the show and talk to the people who help shape it. Listen to Dear Felicity on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. It's time for Tuesday Terror, here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. My best friend, Cord. She's half orc, half goblin. Did I mention that? Only every time you talk about her. Well, anyways, there's this boy named Toby. She says she hates him because she thinks he's better than anyone. You know, because he's a pure-blood human. But... I think she really likes him. You know, in that way. Boys and girls stuff. Anyways, one day I caught her and Toby behind the woodshed. He had his pants down and she was on her knees and sucking on it. Look, kid. As stimulating as this conversation is, and really I'm moved deeply, but how about we play a game instead? A game? Oh, I love games. Oh, good. Then you'll probably love this. It's called The Quiet Game. The Quiet Game? Ah, yes. Master Byron seems to enjoy this game a lot. The rules are quite simple. No one says a word or makes a sound. The first one who does loses. Really? Sounds kind of boring. Oh, it's a lot of fun. Hours can go by in blissful silence. Yes, Master Byron is quite adept at the game. Often goes days at a time without uttering a word. Well, I guess we can try it. Excellent. So let's start right now. So we're playing now? Yes, now be quiet. Master Byron, I beg your forgiveness, but feel I should- Bob Lewis's! Does this mean we can talk now? I swear to Barry I'm gonna dismantle you one day, Bob. Then you would have no one to drive the car. However, I feel you should be more concerned about another matter at the moment, Master Byron. And why would that be? My sensors have detected we are about to encounter a barrier. What? How soon? At our current rate of speed, I'd say four seconds. What? Bob, you're supposed to- I can't keep going. We have to keep going. If we stop, they'll find us. What exactly is the point? We failed, okay? We failed, and now wherever we go, they're gonna find us, and then we're as good as dead. Forgive me if I don't want to die now. Now get up. Ah, there you are. Did you really think you could escape? Be honest now. Uh, uh, no! Oh shit, oh shit. Please, no. I never meant any, any harm. Oh, it's too late to start begging for forgiveness. The Master of Sorrow gave you many chances to change your ways, but you rebuffed them all, didn't you? Openly mocked him, incited rebellion against his reign. What did you think was going to happen? The Master has ruled over these lands since the dawn of time. Your rebellion never stood a chance. Please. I see. I see the error of my ways now. I was misled by the teachings of, of, of him. You know, the, the bringer of ruin. Please. Please show mercy. Do not fear. I shall show you mercy. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, mistress. 
Thank you so much. You'll see. I'll be a changed man. Yes. Yes, if I were to take you back to the gladiator pits, you would no doubt suffer unduly. It can take many hours to die there. It can be quite agonizing, I'm told. A quick death here is a far more merciful end. What? Wait. Wait, please don't... Never let it be said. The War Knight elite are without compassion. My Lady Scarson, I bring word. You may speak. The last of the rebels have been dealt with. The healthiest are being taken to the pits. However, I don't expect they will prove much entertainment. Most are simple farmhands. I doubt they have ever owned a sword, let alone know how to wield one. I also bring word from the Viceroy. The Viceroy? Yes. He commands you are to return at once and report directly to him. I see. Very well. Finish up here and have the troops return home. The first round of drinks tonight are on me. All the breath has been pulled from my body. Every fiber of my being screams in agony, as if every cell of my body has been ripped apart. violently smashed back together. Bob, was supposed to give me warning before we pass through one of those. That is a normal side effect of the passage, mistress. Keep taking deep breaths. The effect will soon pass. What, what the hell was that? Come to that... Where are we? Everything looks so different. We're someplace else. A different fragment. Fragment? I... I, I don't understand. Fragment of what? Earth, obviously. Do forgive, Master Byron. He can be a bit... testy at times. I don't get testy. What the Master means to say is we have just arrived on one of the remnants of the various Earths that fell during the War of the Expanse. War of the Expanse? What are you talking about? Look, it's really complicated. Suffice to say we were somewhere and now we're somewhere else. Right. I think. Never mind. Do you know where we are? Not at the moment. I believe our location to be the least of our problems. The vehicle has developed a fault. What do you mean? The passage has completely drained the main and backup batteries. They'll need to be replaced before we can resume our journey. Great. So replace them. I fear we have no spares available. Indeed, my own power systems have been compromised by the passage. I shall need time to recharge. Does this mean you can help us find a replacement for this... battery... thing? I fear not, mistress. Oh, gee. How sad. I started walking off. The half-elf girl began following me. I guess I shouldn't have been surprised. Nevertheless, I had hoped she'd stay with Bob. What's that they say? If wishes were horses? Was that fish? Never did understand that one. I guess it doesn't matter. So where are we going? To look for a battery. Do you know where to find one? Yes. Yes. That's why I'm looking for one. Look, kid. Are you sure you wouldn't rather stay with Bob? And miss the chance to explore this... fragment thing? Sounds more fun than sitting around for Bob to wake up. Besides, you might need help. Very much to help that. Come along if you must.
We walked for some time. The half-elf girl kept talking non-stop, droning endlessly on about her life. How her parents had been killed from some stupid war. On to her first pet, and finally to how she lost her virginity to a cannibal of some sort. On and on she talked until my attention drifted away. It came as no surprise when I didn't hear her ask me a direct question. Well? Well what? I asked how you came up with the name Byron. Who names their child after the master of sorrow's greatest enemy? Byron's not my name, it's just what I call myself. Oh, so uh, what's your real name? None of your damn business. Sorry. Okay then. Why are you following the Iron Dead? What? The Iron Dead? The first I saw you, you were following alone behind them writing in some sort of book. Then from what Bob said, I gathered you've been following them for some time. If you must know, I'm looking for something. Something that the Iron Dead have? No. No, something they may have seen. I don't understand. Not surprising. The Iron Dead are not individual beings. They're just reanimated dead bodies that exist together, controlled by a single will. So, what one season knows, they all know? Precisely. That's why they're such a formidable force in battle. I've been trying to find a means to tap into their group mind. It's my hope that one of the various soldiers may have come across what I'm looking for. Only every time I've tried... They detect your presence and start to come for you. Yes. But they're my best chance. If I can find a way to tap into the Gestalt mind, I may find the last... The Gestalt mind? That's what controls all of them, isn't it? You're catching on. You may not be completely useless after all. Thank you. Oh, wait. Was that an insult? Byron, you were insulting me, weren't you? Lady Scarza. Welcome. Lord Viceroy, may I say this is a most unexpected honor? Oh, the honor is all mine. Let me assure you. I have looked over the records of your time in the service of our Master of Sorrow. You have? Indeed. I found it to be quite extraordinary. It is for that reason the Master has chosen you. For a very special task. The Master... He has chosen me? Yes. Tell me, what do you know of the legends of the Pale Man? The Pale Man? To be honest, I haven't paid much attention to them. Just myths, stories, nothing more. Oh, let me assure you. The Pale Man exists... Likes to call himself Byron. Byron? But that's the name of the evil one. Byron the Ruiner, who will face the Master of Sorrow and- Thank you, yes. I know the legend well enough. But that is the name he chose. Byron has wandered our lands for many, many years now. At times, he has proven himself to be quite- The thorn in our side, let me tell you. I see. I assume I am being tasked with eliminating him. (laughs) Oh, no. No, nothing of the kind. You see, what is not generally known is... Byron is one of the Master's sons. The Master of Sorrow's son? Yes. One of his favorites, so I'm told. However, the Pale Man has been quite resistant to the Master's plans for him. Bit of a rebellious streak, you'll see. Follows his own agenda, rather than that of our Master. Byron can be quite 
childish, really. Nevertheless, the Master still loves and cares for him. It is his hope that one day the Pale Man will return to the fold and aid him in the ongoing war against the false realities. This is why the Master has chosen you for a very specific task. What is it the Master require of me? Listen very carefully. You must do exactly as I am about to tell you. The mobile street sign was set up on the side of the road. It kept flashing a series of messages up on a large electronic board. In the near distance, a city long abandoned stood on the shores of a blood-red sea. I knelt beside the sign's junction box and started to try and open it. Tanjara kept looking at the flashing word. Stay home. Save lives. We're all in this together. Under no conditions travel at night. Is this a... warning of some kind? More a message to people who passed along this road in times gone by, telling them that they should stay in their home for safety. Safe from what, though? Could be any manner of things, but most likely some sort of sickness. A sickness? Yes, something like this happened where I'm from just before I was... Well, let's just say long before I met you. It was recommended that people stay home and wait for the sickness to pass. And did they? For a time. But some people got impatient, tired of waiting for their lives to get back to normal. Not to mention the rich got tired of losing ill-gotten gains. So those in power started opening things up way too early. The sickness came back and a lot of people caught it. A lot of them died. That's greed for you. Something similar probably happened here. Do we need to be careful? A plague came near our village once. By the time it ended, over half of our people had died. I doubt we have anything to worry about. From the look of this sign, it's been here for ages. Whoever this message was for, they're long dead. I'm trying to get to the battery that powers it. Maybe we can use it for the car. I'm surprised it's still working. These battery things must be very powerful. It's the solar panels built into the sign. They keep the battery recharged. Fortunate for us. Ah, I see. You have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? (laughs) No... (laughs) No, not really. I'll explain it all to you sometime later. Ah, there we go. Now then, what do we have here? And there we go. One battery. So that's it, huh? Smaller than I would have thought. Advances in technology. Batteries used to be huge blocky things, but now you can fit them into your pocket. Hopefully Bob can make use of it. Let's get back to the car. Night drew in as we started making our way back to the car. Tanjara kept asking me questions, so I decided to focus her attention and explain to her how solar power panels work. I was rather surprised to see how quickly she absorbed the information and understood what I was saying. As much as I hate to admit it, she may be of some use to me in my journey. So these solar panels absorb the light of the day? More or less. Then turn that into power, which is stored in the battery for use later? Yes. It sounds a lot like magic. People make that mistake a lot. It's easy to confuse magic with science. I see. Uh, Just... One question? Only the one. (laughs) What exactly is this science stuff you keep talking about? Oh, is that all? Well, to put it simply, science is... Did you hear that? I'm not deaf, Byron. What was that? I've never heard an animal like that before. It reminds me of something. Something I heard long ago. I can't remember what. It's not the Iron Dead, is it? No. No, not this time. 
that moment something stumbled out of the bushes that ran along the rise of the road. Once it had been human. Now, now it was something else entirely. What was left of its armor hung on it in greenish gray flesh. Its eyes glowed a dark amber color. It stumbled on its feet until it saw Tanjara and me. Then slowly it started making its way towards us. Byron, its eyes, they look... They look like one of the Chosen One. Chosen Ones? Those called to serve the Master of Sorrow. The Holy Knight's eyes glow like that. You mean the War Knights? Yes. Have you met them before? A long time ago, somewhere else. Byron, look. There's more of them. Anjara was right. Dozens of War Knights came spilling out onto the road. Like the first, their armor was in a state of disrepair, And a look of madness was set upon their faces. They were coming towards us. Something has gone really wrong for these knights. Byron, they're getting closer. What do we do? That should be obvious. Run! You've been listening to The Byron Chronicles, Beyond the Veil, Part 2. Written by Eric L. Busby. Featured in the cast were David Alt as Byron, Nicole Goodnight as Tanjara, Ellie Hirschman as Bob, Natalie Van Sistine as Scarson, Andy Mangels as the Viceroy, Eric Holloway as the War Knight, Christopher Keown as the Resistance Man, and Carissa DeWitt as the Resistance Woman. Script Editor, Simon Busher-Jones. Sound Design, Eric L. Busby. Music performed by Kevin McLeod. Adrian Von Ziegler. Co.ag Music. Byron Theme by Kai Hartwig. Credits by Kareem C. Cronfley. You've been listening to an ELB production. Copyright ELB Productions 2020. If you grew up in the Bay Area during the 1970s or 80s, you likely remember watching scary movies every Saturday night on Creature Features. Well, guess what? It's back! That's right! Creature Features is back every Saturday night. Join Vincent, Livingston, and the beautifully spooky Tangella. You'll see horror films, sci-fi films, monster films, and so much more. Each week, there's a new and interesting guest. Some of them are famous, some of them are not. There's no better way to enjoy a scary movie than with your friends at Creature Features in their haunted Victorian mansion. Creature Features. Every Saturday night, YouTube, Roku, and Fire TV. For more information and other station listings, visit CreatureFeatures.tv. Bolt your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the Weird Darkness. I'm Darren Marlar, the creator and host of Weird Darkness, bringing you true stories of the paranormal, supernatural, mysterious, macabre, unsolved, and unexplained. New episodes seven days a week. Get the podcast at WeirdDarkness.com or search for Weird Darkness in your favorite podcast app. Prepare for a spine-tingling, nerve-shattering podcast featuring all your favorite monsters. You won't believe your ears when you listen to Monster Monster Kid Kid Radio. Radio. Hear your host, Derek M. Cook and his ever-rotating stable of guests discuss your favorite classic and sometimes not-so-classic monster movies. Subscribe to Monster Kid Radio through iTunes or Stitcher, or visit monsterkidradio.net before the next weekly episode of Monster Monster Kid Kid Radio. Go through the archives for interviews with Sarah Karloff, Victoria Price, and Joel Hodgson. Listen to discussions about movies like Creature from the Black Lagoon, Island of Terror and King Kong. And don't forget convention coverage from Monster Bash and the HP Lovecraft Film Festival. Classic Monsters, Modern Talk, and the head of Rondo Hatton, only on Monster Monster Kid Kid Radio. Radio!
Hadley Price, friendly woman, proper lady, deadly vampire. The Vampire Hadley Price, a short story collection podcast on Buzzsprout, based on characters from the Tales of the Vampire Hadley Price book series by W.J. Oniver, available at your favorite online bookstore. Tales of the Vampire Hadley Price. Listen to the fangs. Read the red. Children of the night, I'm trying to read. Renfield, enter. Count Dracula. I found an especially juicy dinner for you, master. It's not a puppy this time, is it? No, master. I promised I had learned my lesson. <laughs> I know you did, and you've been steadfast ever since. I apologize for doubting you. Please, put it over there. Master, if I may ask, why didn't you go out hunting tonight? Why did you request takeout? It's because I'm reading a very excellent book that I just can't put down. It is quite the page-turner, as I believe the children today say. It's called Gothic Meditations at Midnight by Dr. Stephen Edred Flowers. Gothic Meditations at Midnight? Is it a forbidden grimoire of unholy rites? <laughs> no, Renfield. As its subtitle states, it contains esoteric commentaries on classic horror literature and film from the year 1919, which for me was a very good year, to 1975. I don't understand, Master. Dr. Flowers is a scholar who is also a lover of horror films and literature. And he was a monster kid. You always said children were the most tasty. (laughs) Focus, Renfield. I am not drinking Dr. Flowers. I would rather consume his tasty books, like this one. Gothic Meditations at Midnight. Yes, Renfield. Gothic Meditations at Midnight. In it, he provides commentaries on his thoughts and, well... Meditations. Meditations on film and literature through the lenses of the historical Gothic, from the Gothic tribes to the later artistic movement of that same name. He meditates on various esoteric and occult aspects, and with plenty of sinister fun. He even starts with an essay on me. Excellent, Master. What else did he meditate on? Plenty. There are chapters on the mummy, the wolfman, the phantom of the opera, Dr. Frankenstein and his creature, the nihilistic cosmic horror of H.P. Lovecraft, the psychologically interior horror of Edgar Allan Poe, a unique exploration of zombies, the horror films of German Expressionism, and quite a bit more. Each essay explores information and interpretations that are deep and dark, wondrous and mysterious, with a distinct synthesis of the scholarly and the personal. It sounds wonderful, Master. I will leave you to your book and your meal. (laughs) Thank you, Renfield. Out of curiosity, who did you capture for my dinner? An especially pompous professional film and literature critic. (laughs) Most serendipitous, Renfield. Most serendipitous indeed. Critics. And people think vampires are parasites. Ha! Gothic Meditations at Midnight by Dr. Stephen Edred Flowers is available at SeekTheMysteries.com That's S-E-E-K T-H-E-M-Y-S-T-E-R-I-E-S dot com or at your favorite online or brick-and-mortar bookstore. <laughs>